Every year, a new crop of devices shows up in the market, but what makes some more powerful than others? While the answer is complicated, we can find some clues by looking at hardware. Many consumer electronics share a common part in their bill of materials, powering them up. Uh, you mean the battery? Oh yeah. That's true. But I was actually thinking about the processor. Like the engine in a car, the processor determines how fast the device can get things done. Normally, the faster the processor works, the worse the battery life. But what kind of engines will we see powering devices under the Christmas tree at the end of this year? And will it be worth it to upgrade? This is at the heart of what Chip Wars is all about. In 2009-2010, the ARM Cortex-A8 was the universal single core blueprint for these popular systems on a chip. It powered the first mass market tablet, and these early Galaxy and Nexus devices. Wait a second, what's a system on a chip? Good question. It's an integrated circuit with all the parts of a computer on a single chip, and it helps make these devices smaller and more efficient. The highlight of the single core Cortex-A8 was that it ran between 600 megahertz to one gigahertz. But in the past two years, the ARM Cortex-A9 introduced dual core architectures, frequency boosts up to 1.8 gigahertz, and out-of-order process execution. What? Basically, these processors get more work done per cycle without having to wait for the slower memory. It bypasses the normal sequential program order and instead completes instructions as the data pops up in memory. Finally, the processor reorders the results to make it appear that the instructions were completed in the correct program order, even though the results were computed out of order. Oh, I see. So it's magic. Sure. Magical engineering, along with a dash of ingenuity. But progress marches on. And the mobile chip industry is just demolishing Moore's Law by delivering performance improvements that make two-year-old devices look and feel slow after just two years. Wait, whose law? Who is this Moore you speak of? Moore's Law is named after Intel Core founder, Gordon Moore, who predicted that every year since the introduction of the integrated circuit, the number of components would double every year. On the flip side, the money required to compete in the chip business is also increasing exponentially over time. Unless chip companies show up in awesome devices to benefit from economies of scale, they will have a bad time. So as competition heats up, the number of competitors is shrinking. For example, Texas Instruments OMAP will be done in the mobile business by the end of 2013. Trouble. And some powerful computer chip companies have been sitting on the sidelines watching mobile chips be fruitful and multiply in people's homes. Will this be the year that Intel gets into the mobile chip game? What's the next big thing in ARM processors? If you're new to the channel, check out Chip Wars Episode 1 to catch up on the ARM versus x86 war that's been going on in the chip industry for almost 20 years. But moving on, holding the number of cores and frequencies constant, the ARM Cortex-A15 should be 40% faster than the current Cortex-A9. And just wait and see what happens when OEMs ramp up the cores and clock speeds. A15 addresses more RAM, has a deeper pipeline with 7 execution ports to get more work done per cycle without having to boost frequency and drain the battery, has better memory management to help drive the millions of pixels in high resolution displays, and more efficient media processing for streaming content. But the big question for mobile devices is power consumption. ARM's answer is something called Big Little. Like the Tegra 3, Big Little pairs high-performance Cortex-A15 cores for heavy computational tasks with power-optimized Cortex-A7 cores for lighter tasks. This boosts performance while reducing the hit to battery life to ensure that the right cores are used for the right tasks. And so far, these chips have been announced to power devices like smartphones and tablets, quieter and smarter TVs, servers, and wireless routers. But the best ARM mobile chips of 2013 will do more than just license processor designs from ARM, like the Cortex-A9 and the Cortex-A15, and just slap it onto their system on a chip. The two heavyweights, Qualcomm and Apple, just license the architecture, or ARM instruction set, and then build their own custom processor that speaks the ARM language, but with unique designs that boost performance. Stay subscribed for upcoming reviews of quad-core crate processors breaking the 2GHz barrier, and not to be out-engineered, Apple's custom Swift Core 
introduced in the A6 family of processors that focuses on boosting memory performance and instructions per clock. When it comes to mobile devices, power consumption is really the holy grail of innovation. And all these advances in the Cortex-A15 come at the cost of needing more power, which is fine in tablets and ultrabooks that have more space, but it can be a problem in smaller form factor smartphones. And traditionally power-hungry Intel chips will start to show their hand in the mobile chip game with its out-of-order Atom and Haswell processors that are built on Intel's superior 22 nanometer low power process. At CES 2013, ARM CEO Warren East said the following about the future innovations with ARM processors. And in particular this year I think we've seen palpably more Internet of Things mm. type uh, applications than we've seen in the past and I look forward to next year seeing, uh, seeing that sort of Internet of Things journey take uh, another significant step forward. So with Qualcomm and Apple taking more control of smartphones with their own proprietary chip architectures, and Intel dominating the high-performance computer market, ARM designed its Cortex-A15 at a whole range of high-performance devices and appliances that could connect, compute, and interact with people while using as little power as possible. It's really a great time for innovation in mobile devices as engineers push Moore's Law beyond its limits, and people like us can reap the benefits of the ARM versus x86 battles as faster devices with better battery life come to market. Personally, I can't wait to see the technological innovations that could analyze and track the things that we use every day and help make our busy lives just a bit easier.